you know, crashing some drunks, and there was this old man named Gregory, who was an amazing street artist, and uh, he he was he was doing the kitchen for us, and he was he was amazing. But um, anywho, so uh, the tugboat comes and goes, and then the federal agents come, and uh, the federal agents tell me that uh, I will be arrested for destruction of federal property and looking at up to 10 years in the federal penitentiary for building sculptures out of driftwood on the levee, which is down there is just miles and miles of broken concrete and stones the size of small cars, uh, apparently, you know, dumped there in the 60s. And, uh, ooh, the tea's going. <coughs> anyway, <coughs> so I had my dog with me still, and he was alive, so uh, me and the kids just uh, decided we'll walk up on top of the levee, eat the food that people had brought us, and uh, we watched as prison slave labor removed the sculptures, and uh, it was a beautiful thing to see because these guys had been in jail, uh, you know, watching me on the TV all week. And uh, in New Orleans, the favorite charge of the police is obstructing the sidewalk. And it doesn't matter if you're dead drunk laying there, if you're just standing there, or if you're walking even, or whatever, if they think you're homeless or perceive you as poor or whatever. Uh, they'll arrest you for, you know, obstructing the sidewalk. So I'm assuming that most of these prisoners who were black, most of them, were probably just, you know, poor people that mm -hmm. have been arrested for obstructing the sidewalk or something. And, and uh, but it was amazing to see because they were so gentle while dismantling these things and they were, you know, passing up pieces of it like a, you know, bucket brigade. And, really? And loading it on this truck and... Uh, there was this one huge cross thing that I'd built, uh, and it was a huge thing with a big chunk of mooring rope hanging over the cross beam like the churches do. They'll put a big purple mm -hmm. fabric or whatever, you know. And, and I had all these broken spikes of, of broken lumber, you know, like five, six feet long, these big spikes of lumber sticking out of this pile of rocks holding this, uh, this cross up. And I, I had actually built that sculpture for the voodoo child who had, <laughs> who had you know, for, his, for his faith and, uh, and his pain and misery for centuries of, you know, suffering for Christ and stuff. And uh, one prisoner wouldn't let anybody else touch those and touch that cross. He really? carried it up the levee by himself wow. over his shoulder like Jesus does with the, in the movies. And, so you, uh, do you know where any of those are now? Um, well, I mean, do they still exist? Uh, no, they, they, they are all gone. And um, for a minute, though, you know, they put it all in the back of this truck. And the truck got down to where the SWAT team had been the day before. It was about four or 500 yards downstream on McNichols Wharf, I guess it was. A big wharf going out into the river. And for a moment, I thought they were just going to dump it off, you know, off into the <laughs> river. And I, I really wish they would have. I mean, if there's ever a movie, they're going to. Do you know? To, do you do know that. what today is? What is today? Today is the day of our annual MTV 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 <laughs> URTV <laughs> membership meeting. You need to have the tea. Huh? You need to have the tea, don't you? Well, in a minute. Okay. Yeah, that's today is the day of the of the an, of our annual uh, URTV membership meeting which will be in about an hour. It starts in about an hour. So if you are a member of URTV, run on down here quick. Now, come on. Or if you're not a member of URTV, run on down here quick and become a member of URTV so you can come to the membership meeting. Or if you have let your membership um, lapse, lapse Perhaps you, this would be a good time to re-up your membership and come on to the annual membership meeting. Or if you know someone whose membership has lapsed, you might encourage them to come and re-up their membership and come to the membership meeting. Or if you know someone who is a member and would like, would like to be reminded about the membership meeting because... We want all the members to come to the membership meeting. And so let me invite all of you in for a cup of tea, and then we'll go to the membership meeting. Okay? Are you going to be on until 7? Uh, I'll be on until 7. Somehow, I think, uh, I think I'm going to let the non-members be on until 7. Just promise me you won't cuss. And, and I'll let the, the non-members can sit here and, and run the show. <laughs> until 7. <laughs> 
with with un, with my with my permission long enough because we are voting. This we're voting on our member elected. Um, um, board member, yes, board member. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, our member elected board member, and and uh, and if if uh, and and I I know of only two people running. I don't know how many people are running. I know that two are, and frankly, they're both they're both great. I'll be I will be thrilled with either one of them. But uh, but it'll be interesting to see you know who will be the who will be the new board member and uh, and so come on down and, and, and if you have if you have a, a preference on that you know let it be known if you have if there's anything that you'd like to if you have any preferences about how you would like to see URTV uh, done uh, you know this is an, an opportunity to elect a board member that can speak for you. There you go, and, uh, and 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 the board members. I, let me encourage the people who are running for board member to show up in the next thirty minutes, and you and you may debate one another. Uh, arm wrestle. You can arm wrestle. You can debate one another. Debate one another. You can thumb. You can thumb wrestle. Food fight. What? It, however you want to do it. Uh, you know. You, you can call each other names going into the final match, like they do on wrestling. And, you know, and uh, whatever, come on. Just the, the bottom line is come on down to the meeting. And uh, and so that's the, that's kind of a theme Badger. we're going to run through. Nice to meet you. Mm -hmm. yeah. I remember your name. Larry. Larry. Yeah, I mean, L.S. Lawrence, specifically Badger Lawrence. Badger and Larry. Uh, Lawrence, though. Yeah. You know what that is? Well, that's, that's, there's, a, there's a couple who lived here in town, I, I think they did. Now. they did that. But they, the, well, they, I think they lived in Hendersonville actually, oh, so and they did uh, they did the old time week? radio right, where it was yeah. radio plays uh -huh. and stuff like that from from well, all the way back in the day. Down They've down been in the business Thursday. for years and years, like and they were they were friends with Sir Lawrence Olivier, oh, really? and they called and he they called him Larry. Larry. They would say, right. they would say yeah. Yeah. Larry this. But all your humans look alike anymore, you know. Oh, to say the least. To say the least. What about my son? I'm just a visitor on this planet. Don't intend on staying any longer than I have to. So if you have any spare change for the intergalactic greyhound, I'll be gone tonight. Is that right? The intergalactic greyhound? Yeah, I'm just a visitor, you know. I was coming flying here in my time machine, as I told you, my time machine was stuck in traffic. Oh, well, you know, speaking of traffic, I've only been here a couple of days now. I've and, I, and I have seen gridlock, mad gridlock, all over downtown. There's two reasons for it. There's two reasons for it. One of the reasons, so we do have something, huh? There is some. Um, oh, yeah. And it's good to August, whatever. Okay. What about the China? It's in here. So what are the two reasons? The two reasons are, one, of course, there are more people on board now. Right. Uh, and at the same time that there are more people on board, and so the, the roads are ha have more traffic on them than they have had to deal with in the past, right. uh, they they also have made they can changes to the roads. Contemporaries. Twenty first century. They take roads that are wide enough to handle the traffic they have, and, and they true. make the sidewalks three feet wider, and make the make the uh, uh, road three feet more wedges. narrow. So the cars uh, have so trouble navigating it. Right. They build islands in the middle of the road and things, that, and and all sideways in the road, so that you have to run little patterns. To, it's, they, right. it's, just, it's all in the name, I understand, of slowing the system down. Well, um, is, have they considered any kind of like? Well, I guess there are a couple of those little trolley things, but they look like they're yeah, more like a. They look like they're more of a tourist tour type trolley thing than actual like, you know, ride to work on a trolley kind of trolley. So you know, they look touristy. Well, there's such a large number of people who are tourists that that should be a help. Anything that'll oh, yeah. keep moving. Well, can they have like you know parking space at M Walmart on the other side of the tower or of my, you know, tunnel and just have a shuttle? Okay, yeah. M M M T T A <laughs> moving tourists through Asheville. Uh, <laughs> like 
like grass through a goose. Is that, <laughs> <laughs> is that, they, they come in one side, they shake out the money and send them out the other side. I want to open a, I want to open a place here in Asheville specifically for the tourists. I want to call it the fleecery. The fleecery. <laughs> <I know. laughs> the fleecery. Yes, you might want to set up a, a little. Uh, um, you know, we could have like a glass case. Put some of your. Trinkets there. Oh, really? If you'd like yeah. to work a little trinket stand in, in the fleecery. I would have to uh, charge. We could do a co-op. Huh? We could do like a, a local artist co-op where, you know, they, well, I mean, there's a couple other places downtown uh -huh. already, but um, uh -huh. Woolworth or something, but something that would be more for, you know, like okay. low, right. or lower. Move, get, you some, get those chairs there. There's, okay. Yes, yeah, those. The camera. Yes, that's true. No, Sorry. actually, you're not. There you go. See now you now you're happening. Yeah. Now there's enough chairs to fill the table with chairs and have enough ch chairs to put all the boxes on chairs. I think the last time I wandered, I wandered no, sit the box on the chair now. I think the last time I wandered through there was an artist co-op. Well, I think it's something else. The other box now. up. The one on the floor. Oh. See what I mean? Yes. There we go. See now we're all. Cookies. Yes. <laughs> well, sort of. Actually, we have candy, I'm afraid. Well, let me see, it's let me still see what to me. we have. We have this. I'm a starving I artist, folks. To stop on the way, but I didn't. We have that. I'm a starving artist. Question. Come down in the magnolia tree after a while and bring me a pizza. Open, open. Magnolia tree. <laughs> and if you, if you bring passion. me beer, make sure it's in a paper bag. Yes. And You're going to get some lady passion. Yeah, I actually stayed Devil, under. I stayed Devil under. Um, Claire is there and. Uh, uh, there's, you know, people come and go, but Lady Passion I is I sat with them twice this week and yeah. spoke with them, and um, they're quite something. I mean, I they're was, dedicated. I was really impressed. Did I mean, you enjoy I, them? I enjoyed them very I much. I did. You know, I was, I was, it, what was fascinating was I was learning a little about, I kept wanting to say Wiccan, and it's not Wiccan. It's Wicca. 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 W -I -C -C -A. So you correct me every time I said yeah. it, Wicca. Well, they're stiff Wiccans. They are. They're, uh -huh. they're, um, they're... They're those people that when you say something, they'll correct you. That's called stiff wickets. Their coven is... They like to correct you. Their coven is called Oldenwald. Uh -huh. Oldenwald. I think their website is www.oldenwald. Uh -huh. O-L-D-N-W-I-L-D. You better spell that right. There's still three. I think it's mm -hmm. old, olden, o -L I'm not waiting. www.oldenwild.com. <laughs> it's either .com or .org. I think it's .com. But, and you, you can find a lot about them there. And uh -huh. they're just, I mean, really down to earth. I remember I was like, at one point I was like, well, I was like, okay, the difference between you and us me being a, a, a Christian or baptized in the, the Christian faith is that, you know, basically you worship the devil and, and, and they were like, no, no, that is so not true. Right. We are not devil worshipers. And I'm like, yeah, but aren't they're you They're witches, aren't they? Witches? Are they witches? Well, I was like, they're, well, she's a priestess. She's a, a high priest. priestess. Aren't they all? Aren't they, they all? They wrote a book. No, I'm telling you, these people are really incredible. They wrote a book called The Goodly Spell Book. Her and Dick. I've, I've seen the book. Do you know how to pronounce like it? Debu? Debra? De, it's D. I have their card, but mm. I don't think I have it with me. Anyway, um, oh, where did I put this? It was <laughs> down here. Let me see if I put their card in here. Mm. Um... So, um, uh, anyway, they're, I did, they're just incredibly fascinating people, and we went over there, and um, they wrote a book, which has like been a, a, one of our top seller, and they went to London to meet with Wicca there, London and Paris. Mm -hmm. They, um, uh, I mean, they, she actually spoke in front of the U.S., Legislation, legislator for for marijuana usage to oh, legal yeah. legalize uh, medical marijuana, you know, or, uh, to endorse medical marijuana, marijuana usage marijuana. for people that you know can't swallow their medicine anymore. Where mm -hmm. actually, the medicinal properties yeah. of marijuana have found have been found to be beneficial. Oh yeah. Maybe the lung cancer. Or, um, well, I've been screeching about that for thirty years, and uh, that's. Supreme Court says, well, you know, there's a synthetic uh, equivalent that the pharmaceuticals produce for tens of millions of dollars more than you can grow it yourself, so uh -huh. we'll give it to the pharmaceutical companies, so you eat this Marinol, which is synth synthetic THC, and God only knows what else, and 
Yeah, well, it's, it's rude. I mean, she, we should be able to roll our own medicine. I mean, it's... Roll your well, own she spoke yeah. as, and she's an advocate of this California Spring Commission. So basically, they've been down there under that tree, that magnolia tree, which we have come to believe now is not one tree, but two trees that were planted side by side. So I got a, I got kind of, I think there's a little bit of romance somewhere behind the story of those two trees. And um, having grown up with two magnolia trees in the front yard of my grandmother's house right next door to me, much further apart, I understand how, you know, what they mean to the South and mm -hmm. to this area. Mm -hmm. What I will say though, you know, in all their best efforts in the world, I think the tree really is dying. I don't think so. Why yeah. do you Why do you think that? Well, you know the guy that was here last Thursday, and he said the tree was dying. Yes. And I was like, nah, nah, come on. Uh -huh. So I went down there and checked it out, uh -huh. and I've only seen it at night. I've not uh -huh. seen it. During is it because the, day. the leaves are brown, brown on the underside? Yes, yes. Well, they're not. The leaves are not brown. They're brown on the underside. That's how magnolia leaves that what are. It is? Well, That's I'm what magnolia it. leaves are brown on the underside. I'm just seeing it from night time, uh -huh. but. They contend, the two of them, that this tree is not dead. It is very much alive. She's put salve in certain uh -huh. places of the tree, of medicinal. Oh. So anyway, yeah. uh, you know, I think no, it's the tree does not look ill to me at all. No. And the brown, the brown under the leaves, that's common to, to that's how it looks. <coughs> magnolia leaves are brown underneath. They have it's like they have like a little brown fuzzy hair is? under there. Yeah. Well, I just see that there were some blooms up in the top of that oh, yeah. area. I can, mm -hmm. I, I, my equation was one of two things that there was red hard clay that the roots were uh -huh. going into and that could be choking them. Yeah, and they need but to put the some, lack of rain. They that need we've to had. put some, they need to put some plugs in the ground with fertilizer in them. Like that's how you fertilize a tree and right. and water it a little right. more. The people who take care of bushes and things around the city, you right. know, need to give it a little extra water and a little extra fertilizer. Yeah, it, it, it's 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 becoming root bound. It's surrounded by concrete well, and a concrete wall up down on one side there. You know, it's it's like like they've not they've not made life easy on that tree okay. because of construction. Then then they need to they need to feed it a little, little bit and give it a little more water. What do you think about the sale of this property that actually centers around this tree? It has to do with this tree and this the You don't really want to itself. ask me that, but no? I'll tell but I'll tell oh. you since you have. And the and the fact is and I and I apologize up front, but the but the, and this is not this is not through any knowledge, this is just the way it appears to me. It appears that the uh, um, Developer whose name I don't even know. Uh, Stuart, uh, Coleman. Stuart, uh, Stuart Coleman. Coleman. Yes. Was uh, was sold the property for a pittance for for nearly nothing, right. to to do what he wanted on it, and that that doesn't bode well to start with. They they all but gave it to him. Uh, now now, however it comes out, he wants millions. He did not spend millions for it. Right. He wants millions for it. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. The man is to make money on it. This, you know, it's all about making a bunch of money. And uh, so, if this, if say this, the his the ancestors of Mr. Pritchard mm -hmm. or whoever uh, it was that that Pack, 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 was, Pack think, yeah. Mr. Pack, whatever, his family are the ones that are going to court now, and they're supposed to be seen in August, and they're saying basically the sale of this property was illegal. Right. That right. This when the deed was transferred to the county with mm -hmm. the sale of this property. This property was intended for the purpose of solely right. being a park right. area. Right, we all know that. Was, right. Okay, right. so my contention is that well, we how should. could they move ahead with anything at this point until that's been determined in the court of law? Because people do what they want to do right. to make money. Some, mm -hmm. what, some, somewhere there is a profit motive right. involved, and who is making the money on it? You see what I'm saying? Whose pocket is the money going in? All right, John, let that's, me ask you this that's question. All, that's what it's all about. Whose pocket is the money going in? And, and, and no, they shouldn't be able to do it. It's pretty simple, isn't it? But when they go to court in mm -hmm. August, and if a judge says, no, we're sorry, this property was not, so you can't do that. That mm -hmm. property, this property cannot be sold. Mm -hmm. at, then what's going to happen? I mean, is Coleman going to come back and sue the city and say, you know, you told me, you, you sold me a fictitious property? I don't know what's going to happen. And, and I don't care. Frankly, frankly, <laughs> frankly, when, when, when I went out there yeah. and I sat under the tree here again, I'm going to give my experience. I went out there and I met with Lady Passion and the group and I sat under the tree as you did too. I did, and yeah. I was very taken with the tree. Were you, weren't you? I was. Right. And them. And, 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 and she was talking to another reporter from 13 News and I was listening to the things she said and she said, we pick our, 
our um, battles very carefully and stuff like that. And, and in light of everything I was seeing and, and what I was feeling about the whole situation, I believe she was correct. And I think that she picked her battle very carefully. And I think that I feel that the, tru- that the tree is worthy of the battle that she has picked right. f- for it. And 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 I am uh, the from 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 the power of the tree alone. I am a complete. <laughs> I am a complete and utter con, con convert to the cause. And I believe that the that the tree should be um, uh, saved and and should be looked upon reverently uh, by the society of Asheville. And that we should all appreciate the tree. And that if the parks and, and recreation folks should be should see see fit to Put a few benches around that tree and, and fertilize it a little bit better and make it more uh, comfortable for people to start hanging out under that tree. That 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 uh, that, that more is the better, so to speak, for our entire uh, uh, um, population here, our, our citizens, to be able to enjoy themselves under that tree because it is a beautiful tree. It is a very old tree, and as I sat there, I smelled. Uh, there was a blossom high up and kind of far away from me. But as I sat there, I could smell that blossom. You know how wow. a magnolia blossom yeah. is. Yeah, it does smell really good. And, and, it, and, they, and they're very potent, and they go, well, they, they, you can take one into your house and fill your entire yeah, house. Right, you know right, what I mean? Yeah. And it was that way, and I could smell that blossom. And, and you know, and I, too, uh, uh, love, you know, a magnolia tree in, in a southern setting. You know, and to be able to smell a, a magnolia blossom, and just, and I think that it is right to save that tree, and it is wrong to cut it down. And I don't care what kind of condominium you want to build, right. condominium right. tree, go with the tree. That's right. Go you with know, the tree. Um, good, good. I was sitting there Tuesday night doing the rally. Can and, you amen, my? Can and, uh, will anybody amen? <laughs> <laughs> amen, amen, brother. Amen. Okay. Amen. Amen. I was I was down there for the rally Tuesday evening, and at the same time there was a city council meeting, and they were discussing the whole situation. And apparently, um, uh, the the project is demanding a road in front of the condominium That's complex, right. mm-hmm. That's right. um, which will cut into more parkland. Mm-hmm. And the city doesn't want to do that apparently, mm-hmm. but. Jimmy if he, off, by the way. Oh, Coleman yeah, threatened yeah. more or less. Like actually, he actually had I, I slides apparently that showed where the building would sit if he had the road in front, or the easement in front, or if he had the easement in back. Yeah. And so he shifted in the slide presentation. Apparently, he shifted the entire building, 15 or 25 feet or whatever it was, more in front of the courthouse. So he's basically threatening if we don't have this easement on public, you know, parkland mm-hmm. in front of his condo project. He's going to end up having blocked half the view of the uh, courthouse itself from the square. So it's. Uh, it's I stand by my. I, I it's still pretty, say pretty until insane. August. Yeah. Well, that's why everybody's sitting down there because the they're a, a they're afraid that. Don likes it open. I know. I'm going to back him. Okay, dear. Noise, He's uh, out there right now. Anyway. Anyway, uh, yeah, they, that's why everybody's sitting there 24-7, because they're afraid this guy will sneak down in the middle of the night and cut down this tree, even though it's... Oh, really? Yeah, oh, that's why everybody's guarding the tree. Oh, is, that the, is he that bad? Yeah, well, apparently he's made promises before about not, uh, not damaging trees and right. doing this and doing that, right. and, and apparently he has. You know, he says, we won't do well, this, and then he turns around and does it, and apparently he ripped down a whole bunch of... A woman that just stopped by today was talking about living out by some mall somewhere, the Asheville Mall or whatever, and said that there was this whole row of trees blocking, I believe, the mall area from the residential area, and he promised up and down, apparently, that he would not touch those things. But then they, they bulldozed them all down, and then he blamed it on the workers, apparently. He said, oh, mm-hmm. they weren't supposed to do that. I think but, he's yeah, well. He's a businessman. He's I don't know. Very I'm not saying that he's going to go out there with an axe and chop down the tree, but you know, somebody right. might. You know, or somebody right. who knows. Maybe somebody would salt the ground. Right. They know. did that to the treaty oak down in uh, in Texas. They somebody came and poisoned the treaty oak tree, and they had a bunch of Buddhist monks show up and do a ritual around that one, trying to save it. And uh, yeah, I think two thirds of it was poisoned and, and killed. But. Uh, that's sad. So anyway, people. That's why the people are down there twenty four seven to guard the tree from, oh, okay. from that kind oh, of oh, okay. that kind of stuff. That. And uh, yeah, that's why they're there. And because uh, well, you know, apparently the man's very untrustworthy. He makes promises that really? he doesn't keep. And 
Maybe he'll run for governor someday. When a tree like that yeah, has, when a tree like that has graced the front of City Hall and stuff like that for over a hundred years, mm -hmm. it's not it's not unreasonable to think that the citizenry m might like to keep the tree for Especially another guys. 150 years or something. Well, I think the larger, the larger principle here at this time is whether the property can even be sold. I mean, they may think they well, sold that, it. That, but that may just solve the problem. Yeah, I think that's the, that's, I think that's the largest issue right now, is was the property even available to be sold? And if, if a court of law can look at it and say, we're sorry, you're wrong, it can't, but, you know, based upon this evidence, you could not sell that property. I don't know where that's going to put the city or whoever sold it to them at. But I was hoping they'd build a big parking deck there, leave the tree alone, but over on the other part, build a great big parking deck all back up in there for the for the people to park on, so that it would be. Well, it's already a municipal parking lot behind there. There's just one one deck. So, so you know. that it could be, so that it could be, uh, you, you know, for the citizens of Asheville to park. That would be, I thought that would be in, in the same in, area in, or on the in, other side. No, you know the area that's fenced in with the green fence now. Oh, is that where they're going to put a parking deck? I no, no, they're, they're going to make I'm that grass. That's, that's going to be oh, that's going to be grass. But they should make that a parking deck. Park. They should make that about a ten-story parking deck so that so <laughs> that the, the it would it would be you know the, it was it was it was set aside for for the citizens of Asheville to have a park. And I think that the, being the fenced in the area. Uh -huh, and I think being set aside for the citizens of Asheville to have a place to park. It's close enough. And <laughs> they could call it park so place instead of pack place. So the green area now will officially be preserved for park area. Yeah, that's, okay. they're, they're, they they've been re redesigning that part. It's been so I delayed guess now what they have to do is look at the property lines and say, is that extended part where the magnolia trays part of that preserved property as well? Uh, that's, yeah, that's basically what was part of park land that they sold illegally according to the you know the guy giving the land in the first place but it was really interesting there's a there's a copy of at least uh, I love the original parts of the original uh, document where he's giving this land to the to the county or the city of Asheville or whoever and uh, it, it hinges on the destruction of the current courthouse and the rebuilding of a new one and there's stipulations up Where's and down. That? Oh, it's hanging over there. They have it on the right. kiosk over there by the tree, and and then it's, it has several you know mentions that there will never be a jail built on this land that he has donated. Hey, so, John, I was just so thinking I'm, about you. So I'm wondering if he had some problem with that particular courthouse and jail, and hey, <laughs> he wanted the old one destroyed and, and no jail built. Nice. But, but uh, yeah, it's stipulated in there you know a couple of times that. There will never be a jail built on the land that he had donated for this you know, city of Asheville. Really? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. And he, you know, there was, uh, apparently, I don't know if they were planning on destroying the old courthouse and building a new one at the time anyway, but that was another stipulation that he was going to give the land on condition that this old courthouse be destroyed and a new one built, and that no jail ever be built on the land that he's donated. Good. So maybe a condo is kind of like a jail for rich people. Because <laughs> they have the security guards and they lock doors. and. That's true. You know, and, God only knows the I wish they'd build low-income housing there. That's what I wish they'd do. I wish they'd turn it into a... If, oh. No, wait. Let me take this back. <laughs> right. if, if it had to be built, <laughs> and if it was legally no. whatever, I wish that they would turn it into low-cost housing. After the revolution, it will be. After <laughs> yeah. the revolution, it, it will be. Nobody right. can afford housing. Yeah. After the revolution, it'll be, well, it'll be the people's housing. Hey, John. Hey. Hey, welcome to the tea party. Let's see if I can come up with any camera angles that will include you. No, you're not part of our group. You want to turn that camera a little bit? Uh, uh, which one? That one. No. That one. It's uh, one over there. Turn it, a, turn it a little bit toward toward you. No, wrong way. Toward you. More, more, more. More, more. More, more. More, more. Okay, what? Okay. Now, okay, now get the other one and turn it that way. Just a little bit. This that, is my bell share buzzer. Okay. The wrong way. Other way. More, more, more. What? Okay. There we go. Now, let me see what does that look like. There we go. Now, everybody, now I can put everybody on the camera. Ta da! <laughs> hi, hi, everybody. Yeah. All right. John Blackwell. Yes. Did you know that the Obama yep. campaign headquarters has reopened? 
I, I talked to the guy yesterday or day before that was working there. We opened. Come on, will you have a little cup of tea before you? I'll get one later. I got that meeting coming up. I know. I plan to attend the meeting tonight, so you I'm should. I'm going to let some of my guests hold down the fort for me on this end. Oh my goodness! I'm going to let I'm going to let guests who are not members hold down the fort, unless they, unless I can find members who don't want to vote. Yes. You know, that would be pretty hard to do, probably. Yeah, and I've been talking about it the, today. Have you, I, you? Well, you never see the show. You don't know. But I've been uh, saying that today is the day of our annual uh, membership meeting, and it is also the day that we vote in our member-elected uh, board members. Person, yeah. and, uh, and I'm trying to t invite everybody down, have a cup of tea, and go to the board meeting. Yep. And, uh, and, and I've told them also, if you know someone who might be interested in coming down, a member who, who, who might not know, to call, give them a call, you're maybe good, give them a ride. If you are a member, if you and, are a member, and, if you and, a member and, in your trunk, bring them And if you know someone whose membership has lapsed, I say, bring, you know, that this would be a good time to come down and renew your membership, because I know you're giving the membership report. No, I am not. That was it was you listed. Correct. Was it not listed that way on yes, the? Yes, it was listed that way. But Joe and Is Pat had good? already worked it up, so I defer. I to think that one's got oh, tea. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. This one has to. This is ready to go, that probably. Ready? Uh -huh. It'll be the closest. Yeah. Oh, but I will be there. I will no doubt say some names. Huh. Well, well, I don't know. Are, yeah, I want, I want, what, what, can, what can we do it's about okay, them yeah. posting a, a false agenda? <laughs> See what I mean? An in, inaccurate agenda um, has been posted. I'm such a queen, <laughs> too. You'd think I'd be able to pour tea. Oh, yeah. Bad chance. It's a bad chance. Oh, they're doing it. hot. Um, yes, yeah, so everybody have a couple of minutes. Decide, decide, decide. Roger, we're going to do you next because you're here first. You've got two new microphones. Yeah, they're not new. They're, they're, I just pulled it. They're different. I pulled them. They're, they're uh, Omnis. The and and I know Omnis. They're un unidirectional mics. They're cardioids. And being cardioids, I figured they would uh, pick up a little less room noise. Yeah, I think it's so, effective. And they've, they've worked well that way. <laughs> these these pick up a bit of handling noise, so they pick up a lot of table noise. I'm going to probably swap them for the bearings. But I'm I'm just trying some of the different mics out of our closet. We got some good mics in our closet, including these. Would you like a microphone similar to the to one of these? Do you have any use for such? Oh yeah, I always need extra mics. Do you? Because uh, yeah. Well, thank you. Okay, because I'm uh, hmm. I'm trying to get some of my microphones back from uh, somebody I loaned them to. You know, you know how that is. <laughs> I see you've been posting some stuff online. Looks good. Have I? <laughs> yeah. oh, 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 you're my friend on the, yeah. yeah. I was checking out that space that you've, uh, yes. well, it works great. On it my is. Space? It's, no, it's a new space. It's, uh, it's called Exposure Room. Exposure Room. Uh huh. And, and uh, you can really, you can really put up a lot higher uh, resolution mm. video there than any. stream true high definition. Uh -huh. hmm. it's, it's, the, it's, it's the best I've found. The yeah. best I've seen. Oh, by far, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I've really enjoyed it. And the people there seem quite nice, too, that run it. And I, and then Oh, they're incredible, you know. They get back to you in uh -huh. 30 or 40 seconds if you ask some questions. I know Those it. Those support people don't These do. are not like good? little pieces of cardboard. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know. Oh well, they're good. Dip them in your tea. Did. Delicious cardboard. Did you see? Did you see what he said he about uh, about my tea cookies? He said they taste it like little pieces of cardboard. Well, we'll just see about well, that. Well, they do kind of. Do you want some cream in your tea, and then dip <laughs> the cookies in the tea with the cream? Fiber. <laughs> 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 they're well, you know, they're I'm nice old tea cookies. Cardboard. I'm not yep. too sure. And so, maybe you have another check. Yeah, when starving yeah. artists have to eat something do you, and do you eat coconut? having a little piece of cardboard do you, do you in your stomach, coconut? you know, it takes care of coconut. the growling. Well, then coconut. here, this is a chocolate, I think. Oh, coconut. I make all kinds of things out of copper wire. Yeah, and, uh, chocolate yeah. thing. Yeah. Oh, John's well, got yeah. a good idea. See, if and, I uh, serve that and with the cardboard cookies. Occasionally, I make cookies. great big nice public sculptures that I get in trouble for. See, John has a really good idea with what he's talking about. I'll be around. The same thing. What would you call it? A flea something? A oh, fleece. A fleecery. A fleecery. A fleecery. fleecery. The fleecery. Asheville fleece, fleecery. This is like a flea market, though. No, no. Fleecing, Walmart. Fleecing the tourists is no. the idea. It's a, 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 <laughs> uh, yeah. it's a place for the tourists to come like, and have fun. 
Ah. And spend all their money and then leave. Ah, I gotcha. And, 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 and sort, of, something. Yeah. sort of concentrate all of Asheville into one building so all of us just uh, go uh, there and not go anywhere else. There would else. be a, a restaurant, a music venue, a, okay. a bar, uh, and, 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 a, and a place for him to set up his trinkets. Mm. Um, and, and in there, also the, the uh, Vortex Museum. The Vortex Museum, right, where, you, where, oh, where right. tourists can can actually uh, feel, the uh, feel the vortex, can act, can can toss coins into the vortex, and uh, perhaps make a wish, you know, that such as that. So we're thinking like a, a really big washing machine. Well, right. you know, <laughs> you know, the, 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 yeah. there there are experts on the vortex here. Oh, okay, oh. it's it, and and the and the whole place will be vortextral. Well, I think I saw a picture of it, the location in the uh-huh. Asheville disclaimer. What is? Well, I know, but that's the disclaimer. They were just joking. See, <laughs> what? Yeah. I thought it was real. What? Um, what is that place in uh, London? There's that uh, square. I think you can stand in, and it's famous for other loons who skip up and say whatever they want in that oh, square. Right. That's yeah. I mean, that's their, you know, free Don't speech about place. That one, huh? yeah. well, I just think we, we need to have one of those for the fleece free. Yes, people, mm-hmm. tourists can see actual people say weird mm-hmm. and wacky things mm-hmm. while standing on. That. I know, but the whole town is already works that way. This, we well, yeah, have to concentrate it. Right. Well, we we saw a really weird and wacky thing today down at the tree. We, we were standing yeah, there, you know, a couple hours ago, and uh, um, there was five of us there, <laughs> and all of a sudden this young man walks up and uh, he's like, you know, 20, 30 feet away, and says, "Anybody got a lighter?" And we all kind of look over there, and he drops his shorts down to his ankles. Okay, and there that's enough. They're naked. Next. It was kind of crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a strange Asheville experience. Well, mm-hmm. yeah. I right. called into psychic therapy this way. Did you? I did. You, I do you love those women? I with her. Do you love those women? What's her, what's her name again? I don't remember names. I don't remember. No, I'm the worst on this. Okay, no, he's I bad. I spoke to her on the phone today. Word. Did you? Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, I can't think of her name right now. I want to say Brenda. Is that right? So there'll be. I think that I think that she and Sandy is the other one are coming to, and I only know that because she left a message on my answering machine. I forget names. I can't remember names. I'm, it's very embarrassing. I believe they'll be at the tea party tomorrow. She was really good. She gave me some really insightful things. Isn't she? She's, she's pretty much dead and I on. I thought she was she? really in tune with some of it. Isn't she, she dead she, on? Yeah, really. I mean, she really was. She really, really. Is. And I asked her, had she run a, uh, had she run like a nine hundred number before or something like that? No, seriously, I was. I thought she had some kind of experience or something, and she said no. She's just. You know, she just. She's just got it, and she. Someone does else it. that called in the show had asked if. Um, she had considered doing this full time mm-hmm. or, you know, for money or something like that. Just and for she fun. said no. She said no. She said she just did this just for exact fun. for fun. Yeah. That's right. She does it for fun. And she does it really good, doesn't she? She's great. Mm-hmm. Both of them. She's mm-hmm. really, really good. And she can, she can, she can pull anything together, and and make it work. She can, she can make anything an oracle. She could, she could take a phone book and make an oracle out of it. I swear. She's good. <clears throat> She's good. Yeah. What did you think of the? Uh, to do last night. I enjoyed it very much. What did you think of it since you brought it up? Well, I thought my feet hurt. <laughs> but I so, so much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, these are uh, not the best shoes in the world to do mm-hmm. that in. But um, I, I enjoyed it. They were very good. They were very good performers. Mm-hmm. Right. Where is that? Oh, we did. We worked on a show with Tom last night. He had. He had. Uh, um, what was the girl's name? Molly. From from, uh, from the Barrel House Mom. Yes, Molly, but he made it her show, and she brought in other musicians from some other bands she's been working with and stuff like that, and they sang songs and played guitars and right. and and stuff, and we videoed all that. Right. And uh, he, Tom threw my rhythm rhythm off a bit though mm-hmm. when Ben does switching for Mountain Dungeon. Yeah. You're lucky to get four seconds of a oh, shot. Uh-huh. Tom was going maybe 20, 25 seconds on a shot. So right, like, uh-huh. I got something good. Time to go to someone else. But he would just keep on sticking with me. Mm-hmm. And it was very hard to think of nice slow shots. Well, we've all been working with Ben for a long time. Yeah. It's, it's, it, now we need to get used to Tom's rhythm, what he's got in mind, because he, right. he's the director. Have you done any new shows yet, John? No, but I am planning to do a, a show this Saturday. Good. This is going to be the. Um, we want more pleasure saucer shows. Well, and you shall I think have everyone's them. looking for them. Mm-hmm. I think I've been. I think I uh, was irritating to the, to the, 
talent to the performers. That's one of the reasons I'm not recording anymore and stuff like that. I've pretty well given up my career. I'm, I, I go off quickly. I'm, I'm, I'm post-traumatic stress disorder, and part of it is that I have like that much tolerance for BS, and I'll go off in a minute. I gotta bring you something next time I'm here. Uh, and, 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 and I'm and I'm and I'm not. You know when you work with with rock and roll musicians and such as that, <laughs> you really you have to tread very lightly. Their their egos sometimes are are, are far more delicate than they should be, and and uh, and you and you just. Um, you have to be careful and choose your words very carefully and stuff like that. And and I do things like I did last night, which is I walked out out right in the middle of one of the songs and said and said you're bumping your guitar against that microphone, which he was, which as far as I con- was concerned, the song was ruined by that point and we needed to do it over, you know. So what? So why? let them finish you know but I, I walk out and I'm like you know so I walk out I move some microphones ruin ruin their song but you know it's just oh, well you know I'm you know I'm used to being <laughs> in a studio where the where the studio time oh, well, is very yeah. expensive right. and 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 if if that's not going to be a take you need to stop and get mm-hmm. on with one something that's going to be a, you can use mm-hmm. You know, yeah, I'm a, th- that's the kind of producer I am. I'm about efficiency, which is if you've got lots and lots of money, that's great. But I'm used to working with a lot of bands that don't have any money to speak of. And, and, and I'm, I'm just used to doing uh, uh, just being very efficient and sometimes not, not being as polite. You know, uh, uh, sometimes some of the politeness goes away in favor of efficiency. <laughs> Oh, maybe you should just accentuate that. Yeah, Play up the whole, um, like, Phil Spector aspect oh, of it. F and T, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Spector and everybody was still... Yeah, I so would what? do anything to be able to do stuff with Phil Spector. Yeah. yeah, aside from killing the odd yeah. girlfriend, yeah. it was... Yeah. 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 A lot of other people were that way, too. Phil Spector was very popular to be able to get in the studio for a Phil Spector session if you just got to sit in the corner and watch was... It's highly it's sought after position. Just listen to the Ramones talk about him. <laughs> yeah, well, I did. I talked with the Ramones about him. Well, as I've a got that. Fact. I've, I've, ta- got that. I've, I've talked with them. I know what they have to say. <laughs> I've got that documentary with Rodney mm-hmm. Bingham. I don't tell that nobody. Never mm-hmm. be nobody. Do, uh, to do Ramones. Well, Ramones they told special, me special the Ramones. <laughs> they, it was extensive with the Ramones. It was the, uh-huh. the, lo- the longest Google interview Google they've done. The Ramones told me that that the hottest. Right. And, and I may get it wrong, but that, that that he actually that he chased them around the house okay. with a pistol, and that, and that he chased Johnny around. I think it was Johnny <laughs> with a pistol, and that he can't leave. And that Johnny, yo, know, they locked him in, and Johnny escaped. <laughs> So and refused to go back, and they finished. They finished the record off without him Actually, because he refused to, right. to go back. Right. Right. He was so stuck in that days. first yeah, note for twelve days. hours. Uh, but when, but when all that happened, I had Not been bad. working with mm-hmm. hardcore punk, with punk rock bands mm-hmm. for a year or two down in Atlanta. No, that's good. Okay. You know, and 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 when I heard the good. story okay. and all, I said to myself uh, that I, that. Um, Phil Spector had had uh, was acting like a true professional, and 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 and, 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 and that, I said that man knows how to work with a, a punk, <laughs> punk rock band. Exactly. Did he get charged? Yes. Oh. Not for the not for that. I don't think. No. 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 That, that was that was that was nothing more than production technique. <laughs> Because I got to spend some time with Ronnie, and uh-huh. she was, you know, she was telling me about the Apple stuff. All uh-huh. the, you know, all the, she was uh-huh. filling me in. Yeah, and like there and were some hard feelings there. Well, right there. yeah, but the thing is, like she says, he's he's mad only because somebody wrote it down. <laughs> if he never read reviews about himself, Sorry. he wouldn't have been those things. That's right. So really you know, so never, somebody said mm-hmm. he was a recluse because they didn't see him for a long time. This? Well, then he, he became. Oh. That. But he was uh, he's a big fan of Wagner. <laughs> oh, I am too. And. Um, yeah, but you don't lock yourself into chambers and anybody that's in the area. If I had his money, I probably would. I think I would, too. Yeah. What? Lock myself into a chamber and turn Wagner up till it would crack the windows, you know? Yeah. One thing I heard about... Listen to this. I swear to God. And I never... I'm sorry, John. You were trying to... Go ahead, go ahead. All right. 
I was in my house the other day, and this happens all the time. I know I'm goofy. I was. It happens all the time, and um. I'm at my computer, and then my, this house across the street from me in Murdoch is under construction. They're doing painting and woodwork and everything. And um, so I'm working at my computer at my house, da -da -da -da, and all of a sudden, the guy comes back from his lunch break, and he's got a 1,200-something, a or a, I don't know what it is they told me, but the walls in my house are riveting and shaking and everything is pulsating oh, to you this need guy's a new house. I'm okay. serious. My apartment building was <laughs> built in 1921 and it was about ready to fall down while that guy was out there playing and, and I went out the house car, and I told him, I said, look, I'm sorry as I can be. I said, but you got to turn it down because my walls are shaking and uh -huh. everything from your sound system. That probably made him really happy. Well, no, I, and they were explaining to me that he had a a 12 point something or a 1200 woofer or something and the mm -hmm. other guy but it happens all the time and some of these people come mm -hmm. through the neighborhood and I swear it's like a dinosaur mm -hmm. boom, 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 well boom, that's boom, what happened boom, I was I was one time I was at, at a friend's house and and we were sitting there and I was hearing this strange noise and the and the windows began to rattle in the house and this that's this right. was a car a block down the street and that's right. and and at, and at first I was the first one to figure out it was a boom car exactly it's a boom car and and he was like no no but as it got closer we could hear the boom but the first thing we could tell was because the wind windows were beginning we were to, to rattle and, vibrating. and stuff exactly. like that now um, you may know if you know about a lot about the physics of sound it is very difficult to couple low frequencies to to couple low frequencies to the air. Well, if you're in a closed in area, your window turns into speakers anyway. It's right? crazy. My windows were down. And my house was boom, 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 boom. Mm -hmm. Everything was shaking. I was expecting windows to fall off the ground. And I usually I just, you know, ignore it. But this time he was right across the street from me. And I said, I have had enough. And I went outside and I just told him, I said, look. I said, you got to turn it down. I said, my walls are shaking. Everything in my house is shaking. And they just looked at me like you're kidding, right? No, I am not kidding. Look, Your sound system is that the, strong. The kids in the neighborhood, they just, they just, they just were, they, they roll their eyes and they refer to you as crazy lady. <laughs> I don't care. I mean, yeah, I am. I got papers to prove it, too.